Hello, I'm somebody who's overly confused by the map selection screen in Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion, a 4x spacey thing kind of game, that kind of game, that I played recently and I'm going to walk you through what happened when I played it and give you some of my thoughts on it along the way. To start with, well I almost rage quit immediately here on the map selection screen, because I thought this list of maps was all of them and I was like, what? They're all one versus one maps, I had a completely different impression of what this game was like. I thought we were going to be doing the whole like 12 free for all player thing that a 4x kind of game would normally do. Well that actually is in the game, but you do have to look for it as it turns out. There's this change maps button that I eventually decided to click on, which gives you a different list. And one of the lists you can get is the one that I wanted to see, where it's a big map where loads of players can play at once. What I want to see here is that large map's title at the top be turned into a drop down menu so it's more obvious you can change what the list is. Just having it say change maps underneath in particular is kind of the worst way of going about this. You could at least have the thing that says change maps be the title of the list so you know that you're changing the list in some way. Well I had quite a few UI UX hiccups along the way so I'll rant as we go. I eventually work out. I can start this free for all game with 10 players, loads of random factions, but I do have to pick my own faction and oh my god this screen's quite ugly I must say. They've gone for the whole over designed 3D UI to try and be futuristic in such a way that it doesn't look futuristic at all. Well they've also got the two factions per screen thing going on which adds to the potential confusion of this screen, it's simpler than it looks basically. There are three factions in the game, humans, religious humans and the aliens. I'm not sure why but I feel like I've played loads of other sci-fi games from the past that had those three things be the faction. I think there was just a phase in game design where religious humans was a different faction to humans and then there was a throw in alien faction as well. We don't really go through them in any detail, I just sort of scrolled through them. Might note I'm using this arrow on the side to change the faction on the screen. Didn't really like that either and I don't like the fact that this selection menu is on a black background just not taking up the rest of the screen, something could be done there. But here was my choice, I went for Advent Rebel entirely because this face was very relatable. I want to play as the neutral man. So we're going to be the religious faction and rebels as well. I don't really know what significance that has, if it has any at all, and we're going to play without that knowledge of course, so here we are in the game. The game is more RTS-y than I thought it was. It's sort of like a 4x game, but it's more focused on having a quite tight pop cap and microing military units. There isn't really much you do in the way of economy, your planets, your colonies just give you a bit of money, but really they're all just blobs in the network of lines which is where you can go, like many 4x games, and you have to go down the lines taking the blobs, eventually you'll find somebody else doing the same thing and you'll have to kill them, so you make shipyards and such to make a few ships and only a few, and you throw them in and see what happens, the ships all have stats and such and some of them have special abilities too. A lot of the things you build are actually these little capacity upgrades that just allow you to build other things, so there's actually even fewer buildings in the game than it looks like at first. We do of course have a tech tree to go through, I'm not sure where I stand on this tech tree, because I didn't really like how it was divided into so many different categories, mainly because I didn't really have any handle on what would be in each category, like if you told me there's a category called harmony, I don't really know what text to expect from that category. I think it's suffering slightly from something I'll mention in a sec. The fact that we are a religious faction means all of the texts have been given some religious flavour names, but in some cases that obscures what they actually are supposed to be. You have to play as the normal humans to get the straight up name for stuff. So that's why this area that might be called like logistics or something is called harmony instead. Well we can research things in that tech tree, doesn't quite take up the whole screen, gotta give that complaint whenever I can just make it take up the whole screen. This game is from the past by the way so we have to give it a few free passes to be 
based on old UX convention where things were just generally worse. Here's me not knowing how to colonize this planet, and I'll rant about this. In the tutorial, it teaches you how to colonize a planet using a big capital ship, but it turns out that there's only one specific capital ship in the game that can colonize planets. The vast majority of them can't. So I built one of the eight or so you have available, and it wasn't the right one. It had also said somewhere in a tooltip in the tutorial that you can make specific colony ships to do it as well. But I couldn't see the option to make something that was called colony ship, and you might be seeing where I'm going with this. I decided to try and research these colony-like techs. Maybe I thought I'd unlock the colony ship. It doesn't say that it's going to, but I tried to do it anyway just in case, thinking maybe it just didn't say. While I was doing this, I was venturing off vaguely to the right of our start position and a few lines down the network. We encounter somebody else and here's their capital ship coming at us. We though have a few tiny little blobs there as well to support, so I thought we might as well stick around and take the engagement because maybe we'll win. It's the kind of strategy game where your main goal is going to be to just find the player that's nearest to you at the beginning and take all of their stuff and then you're virtually guaranteed to win if no one else can achieve the same, which is not guaranteed. I think the other factions are going to be killing each other off in the fog of war, as we'll see later. Well, we're able to take out the enemy's very small fleet and successfully get what I presume is an advantage. All of the ships do have stats and specialties and are hard counters to other kinds of ships. Some of that is in tooltips, and I wasn't particularly fast or eager to actually go through and learn that sort of thing. I mainly just made the attack looking kind of ship and spammed them. Well, we'll see how that goes for us. We've got something to do now. We need to go take this yellow faction over there. They're very close to us, so that should make things easy, I guess. Don't have far to go. While arranging this, I did work out how to make quote-unquote colony ships, and it's the same issue with the tech categories. Our ships all have a religious-themed name, but in the tutorial, you were playing as the normal humans, and in the tutorial, the ships have really practical names. They're called like frigate, scout ship, colony ship, things like that. But here, they're called disciple, seeker, and missionary, so they're just other words used to describe these things because we're the religious faction and we're going whole hog on the one-dimensional faction traits. So eventually I worked out that the missionary ship is what you use to colonize places. I had actually thought that the missionary ship was what you use to improve your relations with other factions, because it mentioned something like that in the tutorial. Turns out that's a different thing called the herald ship. You can see the colony I made is actually immediately under attack by some rebels. The galaxy, or this star system I should say, we're only fighting over one solar system, is full of just like generic rebel ships that attack everybody. So you do need to make a small military to expand out of your home area safely. There are also pirate fleets that move around and it is possible to have them not attack you. I didn't know that at first, but basically I ended up fighting a fair few pirates early on. We'll come back to that as that topic becomes a bit more important to us. One thing I thought I'd mention here is that this game, like so many others, is a World War II in space combat mechanics game. And it was while playing this that I started thinking, really, my quest for the ultimate space game that I appear to be on probably really starts once I find a game that doesn't have 2D World War II combat mechanics as its main fare. So we're talking about things like weapons having extreme range or infinite range and the importance of heat and just knowing things about the enemy, knowing where the enemy are at extreme range and trying to keep your own stuff concealed and just cool sci-fi stuff. Unfortunately, the nearest thing I've seen to that is a mod for Stellaris. One day, some sort of outside-of-the-box strategy game that uses brand new mechanics will come along. It's not this day. Here's a very brief look at the diplomacy screen. I moved away from that because it was too ugly to look at, but we'll look into diplomacy more later as it becomes more relevant. We have discovered another faction. There's one to our southwest in the solar system, the pink faction. I discovered them by encountering this gigantic thing just hanging out. I've got this tiny fleet that's shooting at it, and I didn't really know if it was safe for, for us to just sit here and try to win in a shootout. But it kind of looked like it wasn't doing very much back to us. So I just left it there and we ended up actually battering that thing into submission. My main military focus though is to go after Yellow, so I'm putting ships together and sending them into Yellow's home system. 
Once we get here, things are looking pretty good for us. They've got all these scout ships doing absolutely nothing just on the edge of the system. I wonder if the AI just sort of forgot to use them. So we can take them out. I actually had a mission from another faction to take out some ships of the yellow faction, so we're gaining relations with somebody by doing this. There's a whole mission system, but maybe I'll talk about that later. For now, the main thing I was noticing is that yellow aren't really reacting. We've showed up in their home system, and there's not very much here. One military ship attacks us, and that's about it. So we are in business. We can just besiege them because we have the early game military advantage. And if we take out their military production facilities, there will be nothing at all they can do to stop us, and that will be them effectively out of the game. We've nearly defeated that pink battle cruise out there in the middle of nowhere. The only issue with bringing down the yellow area is that it's really hard to take out buildings with these early game units. They're pretty weak and buildings have a lot of health, so it's very plausible for them to make new ships out of facilities that are under attack. And here we're facing an enemy capital ship that would have come out of that ring thing on the right. Luckily, I also have a capital ship and some more stuff. Again, there are stats associated with the different kinds of capital ship, but I didn't spend enough time reading the tooltips to even know what they are. So I just thought my stuff will probably beat their stuff. And it appears I was right. In particular, their stuff tried to leave and got shot a whole bunch of times on the way out. So that sealed the deal. So now we just gradually work our way through all of the buildings. They actually built another capital ship while I was doing this. We can casually quit the battle to go into the technology screen and try to upgrade our weapons to do more damage. I was very conscious of the fact that we're not killing them very fast. We've been in the system for about 15 minutes now. We've still barely made a dent on their buildings. They do have a, quite a lot of health. I'm guessing it's balanced against early game aggression like this because it's so effective. But as long as we're not distracted by anything else, we can afford to waste massive amounts of military time and resources gradually killing yellow. The hope will be that it will pay off because we're eventually going to move in here and have another faction's general starting area under our control, which will be nice. Looks like we've kicked out pink. And here's my main colonization strategy. There was a planet towards the middle of the system that I'm gunning for effectively ignoring many systems that are close to my home area to try and get that central base in the middle of the map for use later. So we've eventually got this ice planet here. It's going to be hard to defend if somebody attacks it, but in this early game phase, not much is going on. Very few other players are hanging out in our area of the galaxy. So basically, I'll eventually build up this area. We can fortify it with space defenses, and that will be an important forward base for later. Now as for taking over Yellow's territory, this game goes hard. You can't get their planets to surrender, you can't annex them. The only way to take a planet from another player is to kill absolutely everybody on the planet by nuking it into submission. A terrible idea in the grand scheme of things, but luckily nukes only kill people in this game, so the planet itself will be left intact after we glass the entire thing. That should be fine. So we just have to very slowly kill everybody. Then it will go back to being a neutral planet and we can colonize it and have another nice quality base over there. In the meantime, here's another look at that diplomacy screen. I don't really like the design as mentioned, I just don't like the design of much UI in this game. And I guess I don't really like the way the factions are just in a list on the left. I'm spoiled because if you've played something like Endless Space with its glorious diplomacy screen in comparison, this list of things you have to click through is not very interesting at all. And it's just a bit ugly in general and slow to use as well. Well, we can complain about that all day. I just didn't do very much diplomacy. And that was quite a lot because I didn't like the diplomacy menu because I'm weird like that. I'm now getting to the business of securing the areas directly next to my starting planet so we can actually secure some easy colonies for ourselves. And we've just about dealt with yellow over here, but we are now under heavy attack by pirates. Essentially, the pirate fleet, I think the way it works, is it goes after whoever has the highest bounty on their head. And that bounty is a number that I think mainly goes up if other players decide to put a bounty on you. In the top right, you can see that my little purple faction icon with a zero next to it is there. That's the faction who is being attacked by the pirates at any given time, so they're targeting me specifically, even though the bounty on me is zero. This just means that nobody has a bounty on them, and maybe the game defaults to attacking the player in that case. I just have to put a bounty on somebody else to get them off my back. 
I wasn't really paying attention to any of that though, I thought the pirate attacks were just natural and I had to deal with it. I was more worried about going after Pink because they were expanding right next to me, they're two jumps away from my capital, so we need to do something about them. Now that Yellow is effectively crippled too, that should be easy enough. We can start building up right next to Pink here at the front lines. One thing I thought I'd note here is that you have to manually build mining stations to get resources. And it reminds me of Distant Space 2 or Distant Worlds 2 that I played recently where it automatically builds mining stations because you always want to have them, there's no reason to not build them. And I appreciated it in retrospect that in that game they solved the problem of having to click on a button a bunch of times, which gets worse and worse as the game goes on, but we can complain about that later. Here is the pirate screen and me noticing that I am the wanted man of the galaxy. Nobody else is wanted either by the looks of things. So as I said, all I need to do is make somebody else the pirate's main target, and while I initially clicked away, something in my brain clicked and I was like, wait, that's all I have to do. I somehow learned the mechanic by osmosis and decided to put a bounty on somebody else so that I wasn't wanted. A miracle, really. I very well could have just ignored that screen after clicking off the first time, but sometimes I go back and look at a screen a second time. Truly a miracle. As for Pink, I go in with the fleet, and it's good news again. They appear to have specced mainly into trade ships. They have trade ships everywhere, so they're going for some sort of eco build. And there's very little military, so turns out they've made the mistake of being next to me. We can just kill them, and if we kill them fast enough, they won't be able to respec in order to stop us. And victory will be guaranteed, so that's all good. Another neighbor in big trouble. I saved and reloaded about this time, and I thought I'd reload it into a different map or something. I was like, what's going on here? Turns out that the camera had been rotated in between the save for some reason. Well, there we go. The game does have a slightly easy to mistakenly rotate camera because it rotates if you hold the right, right mouse button down while moving the mouse, which you might often do if you're quickly giving a right click order. Anyway, I'm actually doing a tactic here, believe it or not. I've got this fleet set to the minimal engagement range. Normally stuff will attack any enemy stuff in the same system as it. But by hiding in the corner with that low range, we can avoid going near the enemy's defences. We eventually take out their trade infrastructure, but they do send their big capital ship to fight us. Once again, I have more small ships, so maybe we can win. The capital ships do have different stats and are suited to different things. The only issue is it took us so long to do this fight that it seems they're actually making more ships and adding them into the mix. Still, I think the fight is going our way. I come here to look at the research screen and I thought I'd rant briefly here about the research screen or just the research system. When you're not looking at the research screen, you can't see how much progress your researchers have made. And in particular, you can't see if you're not researching anything because the researches are things that you buy. It's not like a, a chain of free things that you set up and research in the background. But you do have the advantage if you are constantly researching something, so you can theoretically be the first to reach certain researches. But because you don't know when your research queue is empty and ready for you to buy another thing, you can't really do it optimally without constantly hovering over the menu or opening the menu quite a lot. And you do want to not buy a research until it can be researched, because otherwise you just lose the resources and then it sits in the queue not being researched and you could have used the resources to make a ship or something and played more optimally. Not that I am trying to play optimally really, but it just seems like an annoying setup. You could very easily shove a bar underneath the stuff at the top to show you your current research status and that would be more satisfying as well. A nice thing about this game is that while you're pop capped pretty heavily, it has a unique mechanic that I don't think I've seen elsewhere where at any time you can increase the pop cap, but in exchange, all ships will cost more upkeep. So this makes there be a bigger difference between going for military and eco builds. If you really don't spec into military, there are much bigger economic advantages than just saving a bit of money. You save a lot more money than you otherwise would. And I like the idea of having your economy work in phases. You get to the point when you feel economically strong enough to take a hit by increasing your upkeep on everything by 20% or whatever it is, thus unlocking the ability to have more military. You'll probably need to do it as the game goes on, I don't think there really is a true eco build available. Now it was taking so long to fight Pink, they were building more capital ships and the fight was just going on in that system forever. So now that I have this pop space, I decided to call off the attack altogether. We've unlocked a few more ships and with more space to use as well, we can make 
a better fleet and just come back later. So I abandoned the plan for a while and then returned with this fleet with more stuff in it. But while I was away, Pink have fortified their position and in particular they've built this star base, the ultimate defensive structure. Little did I know it's not going to be as strong as it's supposed to be because in the tutorial it was talking about star bases being really good for defending. But the, the way they work in reality is that you have to build it and then gradually build more things in it. It's kind of like a planet unto itself. So you have to build things on it to give it stats. The base starbase isn't that powerful. So our relatively early game spammed fleet is going to be absolutely fine to rip through this area as it turns out. I didn't know it would be, I just decided to find out and indeed it was. You could sort of tell by how quickly its shields were going down that we'd be fine. We've also now fully taken over where yellow was on the map, so we have two starting areas fully colonized. We don't need to worry about this easternmost border for reasons I'll discuss in a sec. We just throw down the trade port there to make some money off this zone. And with our pocket planets like this one right at the back, very far from all the action, that's a great place to slap down the research buildings. As mentioned before, you're very limited in how many buildings you can make in one area, so you do need to have these pockets somewhere where you can put your research facilities so that your frontline planets can have the culture spreading things and the military building things. Culture, by the way, is what the color of the lines on the screen means. I think it allows you to force planets to rebel if they have the wrong culture and your culture spreads in and causes mischief. Well, things are going well against Pink right now. We've blasted through the starbase and are taking out their main area. You might have noted, though, they actually have an attack fleet of their own in my territory, just one jump from my capital system. But I have a small second fleet that is on the way to deal with that. It will take a while, but we'll probably be fine because Pink will have the same problem I have. It takes too long to kill anything. Here, for the first time, I decided to really look at what my ships actually were. I think they look quite good, but I suspect this game probably has the same issue as something like Distant Worlds 2, where you shouldn't really look at the fleets. So while the game does have like fully rendered and modeled spaceships to look at and lasers to enjoy, realistically, looking at it is a bad move in the game. I think Total War has the same problem with this, really. Optimally, you'll never see your fleet, so maybe it should be abstracted away and use less resources to process rendering that fleet because you can't see it the extreme majority of the time. I just want to fight with squares and triangles, of course. Here's a look at the diplomacy screen again because we're finally doing some actual diplomacy. We now have an alliance with the blue faction that is to our east. So our eastern border is really secure. And how did I get this alliance? Pure luck. I'm not really trying to do anything with the diplomacy, but various factions will like or dislike you based on what you're doing. Turned out that the blue guys next to us liked what we're doing. They're also the same faction as us, I think. They're also advent at least. So we can bond over that. This means we don't have to put military on one side of our empire, which will make things much easier. I was fully prepared to just go full free-for-all and fight in all directions. Instead, we can focus down pink and take the massive empty area between our northeast and northwest zones. It was around this time that the pirates started to be more of an issue, or my lack of understanding of the pirates started to be more of an issue, because they were sending pretty substantial fleets to attack me. I had no idea how the pirate system worked, so what I thought was going on here was that the game was trying to hold me back because I was being too successful or something. I thought maybe it just sends pirates at you when you expand quickly to force you to do something else. And indeed, this was forcing me to not really take down pink very much because I had to send most of my ships into my own interior systems to fight the pirates, since these pirate fleets are powerful enough to gradually take out your systems. So with this delay, we're not doing too much expansion, and I thought maybe this was a built-in game-balancing mechanism. But as it turns out, it's just that the pirates go and kill somebody every 15 minutes on a cycle, and it happens that I got the raw end of that a few times in a row. So at this stage in the campaign, I was fighting the pirates a lot. You can see a big fleet coming into attackers over there. And because it takes a while to travel around, and indeed a while to actually fight space battles, you can easily spend 10 of the 15 minutes until the next pirate raid dealing with the current one. And if you don't deal with it, here's an example of what happens. We're actually getting taken down over here, then nuking our planets and blowing up our space stuff. 
here are our guys gradually arriving to deal with that. We don't actually have that many ships in comparison to the pirates. But the pirate ships all don't have any shields, and we do. So in long-term battles, our guys can be sustained for longer and we end up winning all of the fights in the end. I had left a few ships to try and pursue our war against Pink, but unfortunately they have the odd ship here and there, which is enough in this case to scare off my missionary vessels. Although that capital ship was nearly dead, so nothing too bad, we can take it out with a few things in that area. Here comes another big pirate attack. I'm not even really sure if I do understand this system, because as I understand it, the faction highlighted in the top right is supposed to be who the pirates are currently targeting, and the number is the bounty on them. So if nobody has any bounty, they can target people with zero bounty. But the last few have come in to attack me, and I don't think I've had the highest bounty very much. Although what may be happening is an AI player puts a bounty on me just before the 15 minute cycle ends, because it's whoever has the highest bounty at the end of the cycle that they attack. And then the bounty is depleted by you losing ships. So when the pirates attack, they'll take out a couple of trade ships or something, which removes the bounty. But because the rest of the ships are already programmed to attack us, the rest of the big invasion just keeps on coming. So maybe that's why we're fighting the pirates so much, despite appearing to not have bounties on my head. At least I think that's how this works, not entirely sure. Looks like our planets are being nuked once more. It's not going well for the people living on this particularly desolate location in particular. A while later, I think that was another five minutes, we've taken down the pirate fleet. Again, while the pirate fleets look strong, they're weaker than they look because they don't have shields, so they effectively don't have regenerating health like our ships do. So we win, we can easily replace our casualties, and we're ready for next time. We're lucky though in that the next cycle isn't targeted at me. Not that I understood that, I was still sure this was some sort of intentional war I was supposed to fight just to delay me. Well, actually it delayed me by chance, I could have spent a very small amount of money for all of that to not happen, I think anyway, and we would have already taken pink by now, instead we're flying backwards and forwards and generally wasting time, but even with that, we're still doing pretty well, although the reason it looks like I'm doing so well is that your information on the rest of the galaxy doesn't get updated in real time or anything, so we have the other faction's early game positions only known to us. Eventually, looks like I'm finally actually doing this again. We go back into the pirate menu and start actively trying to not be the one with the highest bounty. Again, it might look like I'm beginning to understand the mechanic, but I was just doing this on the off chance it solved something. I actually hadn't pieced together that the bounties were something to do with why I was being attacked by the pirates. I thought maybe like putting a bounty on somebody was more to do with giving other players money. So like you'd put a bounty on somebody and then another player faction attacks them to take the money. And then the pirate thing was just random or something else or wasn't really related. Even though that's not how it seems to be, I'm just telling you how little I understood this relatively easy to understand mechanic while playing, but because of my misunderstandings, by sheer luck I kind of started playing correctly within the bounds of the mechanic anyway. So from here on, I managed to avoid the pirates for the most part, although you might notice that whenever I put a bounty on somebody, it immediately goes back to being me with the highest bounty. That means that the other factions are in constant battle with each other because their bounties just disappear, people are claiming the bounties right away, and then it goes back to being me, who is relatively unmolested as it stands. So that's all gone now, we've taken out pink, we've stopped the pirates, and I moved on to what I thought was an empty system, but this comes back to the lack of intel again. Actually, the blue faction that I thought was in the bottom left has expanded all the way up here, so we're now bordering them after taking on pink and we end up barreling into one of Blue's systems. I thought, well, let's just kill them. You're already at war with all factions, so there's no negotiation required or anything like that. We go in and just start shooting. But Blue actually has a secret weapon here. They have the Titan. This is the big class of ship that I think you can only make one of during the campaign, or one of at a time, I should say. So a powerful thing. Can we take down the powerful thing? Well, I decided to just try and find out. Usually in strategy games, the giant powerful thing isn't that giant and powerful because you need to have it be balanced with other things of equivalent population space or something. So a blob of small ships should be able to take down one big ship, that was my logic. And we can confirm that by just looking at the tooltips and seeing how quickly its shields go down, stuff like that. So we commit to the fight and the Titan tries to leave, probably a good idea. 
we almost kill it, but it just about jumps away. Now we could just let it leave and take over this system. The risk of pursuing it is that the next system down might be heavily defended or have a bigger fleet there. I decided to just go for it, we had no intel, but I jumped after the Titan and it paid off essentially. There was more blue fleet down here, but not that much, and we caught the Titan on the edge of the system, finishing it off. So there we go, we've achieved something, taking down a big ship, and we still have the local advantage against the other stuff that was here. So that's all fine, we'll fight them some more. And our war against pink essentially flows right into this war against blue, we'll just carry on. But here's some friendship news, we're now going to get ship vision with light blue on the other side of the galaxy, so we can get some more intel about what's going on from that, as long as they're bothering to scout, we'll get some intel. I could actually be sending scout ships into all of the systems in front of me to know who occupies them and what stuff's here. Instead, I kind of just sent the entire fleet forward to scout, because I just thought, whatever's here, we'll probably be able to kill it, and the game's pretty lenient about allowing you to just turn around and leave if you jump into a system, see it's packed with enemy ships, and just think, nope, you can just go away again quite quickly. So, we now enter the phase of the campaign that was essentially a very big spam war against blue, with both of us just spamming ships against each other. It takes a really long time to take a system, as I've said before. So there wasn't very much action, so I guess there's not that much to say about this. We'll just look at a few cool moments. I kind of knew from the beginning that we would be able to win, simply because we have more number than them, or we almost certainly do. So if we just keep our population cap completely filled and try not to float too many resources, then we should be able to outspam them, even with no tactics and no game knowledge, no intel. Ultimate strategy, really. Soon we do have a decisive battle of sorts in that their titan comes back, this time with a fleet. However, as you might note, I've also put my titan in my fleet, and my one looks cooler. It's kind of like a Bronze Age depiction of a deity or something. Pretty cool. There's, well, it's like a jellyfish with a skeleton. I don't know, a little bit cool. Not cool enough, and it rightly flees from the engagement, getting more and more destroyed all the way. So that was the, the big battle of the campaign, really, the biggest one didn't last very long, I did pursue them into the next system. Then there was a kerfuffle, because some of their ships had jumped back to where I was before, so I split my fleet in two and had some of it also jump back to fight them in the other system at the same time, but as I was doing that, the ones that had jumped back, jumped back back, meaning I have to follow them and we do all end up in the original engagement in the end, and things went okay despite the various kerfuffling. Because, while it's kind of hard to tell, I think we have more number on our side. Well, it doesn't even really look like that from what's going on here, but things seem to go fine. Fine enough that I stopped paying attention and started using that camera rotation to try and get some kind of cool shot. I was looking for a screenshot here, but there's too much just stuff on the screen everywhere and lines everywhere. I don't really like the whole lines at short range combat thing, but this is part of my not wanting to do World War II in space, space combat thing that I apparently have and not many other people seem to have. Well, we shot at each other and we won. That's the end of the story there. And then every roughly two to six minutes we fought them again. There were loads of battles against Blue. It seems the time to kill is quite long compared to the time to rebuild a ship. So we had constant, relatively large space naval battles against them. But we always just obliterated them, I guess we have better tech. The techs don't actually make that much difference to your attacking power, I think a max teched out ship has like 25% more damage or something. But we just had more stuff, maybe our shields are regenerating more than theirs or something, who knows. In the end, after bajillions of battles, it gets to the point when we're clearly just destroying their stuff easily and it's fine. It could even be just positioning, in that our ships are focusing fire on stuff at the front more, the enemy are distributing damage over more shields that then all regenerate and something something something, our DPS appears to be higher, we lost barely anything even in fights where the enemy, like this one, seemed to have at least an equal number of ships in the fight compared to us, who really knows what's going on, aside from, we're winning. Here we are again with a titan on titan battle, I'm once again looking for the screenshots. I'm not here for the strategic victory, I want the photographic victory. Unfortunately the camera is spinning out of control, so the photography is actually proving more difficult than the strategy here. But yes, we're advancing and gradually taking everything, and I mean gradually because it does take a long time to not only defeat their space fleets, but to take planets. 
And then there's this part, every time you take a planet, because you've nuked everybody to death to take it, they're all effectively new colonies, so you have to go through and build everything. There's not that much to build, and it feels really automatable because there's so little stuff in the game, and you kind of already know what you want. It's hard to automate in that it doesn't know what strategy you're going for, like it doesn't know if you want to focus on eco or focus on culture or something like that. But at this stage, because it doesn't matter, I started getting annoyed about the fact I was having to do this at every planet. I'm pretty sure that in retrospect, I didn't have to do that at every planet. If I just ignored all of Blue's territory and just left it basically empty, we probably still would have had the eco to win. But I went to the effort of building an entirely new faction's worth of economy essentially in blue space, while also occasionally stopping to kill them a bit more. They kept spamming out that titan, and eventually we got to the point when we found their titan foundry. You can actually have more than one of these, so this isn't necessarily going to stop production, but in this case it did. I've also bought some more popcap upgrades. That allows me to have more fleets at the back filling in the spaces. In particular, we need fleets that have loads of purge ships to speed up the capturing of planets. So I started trying to offload that onto separate smaller fleets that would do that separately to the main fleet going around taking out all the space stuff. So yes, we kill a lot of civilians. And as mentioned, I think I didn't even need to do this. I could have left Blue a little bit intact and just rampaged through and captured all of their military stuff. Although actually, if you leave a planet colonized, it can completely rebuild the entire faction, even one planet still alive. So I guess you do have to nuke everybody, come to think of it. Well, that's good, isn't it? A sort of sin of a solar empire, if you will. We get to the point when we've captured half the map now. This is the point when the game should end, in my opinion. We're so strong, we can't lose anymore. So a sort of short victory condition would be nice. I didn't actually know, though, how to win the game, because there were a bunch of things you could turn on at the beginning for non-standard victory conditions. But what the game didn't tell me is what the standard victory condition was. And I actually still don't know what it is, but we just had to keep going, essentially. I was sure I had to do something against our next enemy, the red player. So we go on in and start destroying them. Our allies, the light blue player, control a quarter of the solar system. And there is allied victory enabled. You had to enable it specifically, and I chose to at the start of this campaign. So we don't have to deal with light blue, which is nice. Here's an example of almost everything we have in our empire attacking one enemy ship. And you can see its health gradually declining. It takes a long time to take out a ship, so I guess this is what I'm talking about. In the amount of time it takes to kill this guy, they could make another one quite plausibly, just in the same system even. So either the construction should take longer or the killing should be faster. I feel like with so many things firing on one ship, it would be fine for the killing to be quite fast. Now we take out some of Red's systems. I sort of thought maybe I have to find their homeworld and capture it in order to win or something like that. We do have AI surrendering on, which means AI players will give up if they can't win. Well, they should have given up already, but I guess it's a more rudimentary assessment. Well, perhaps that's what happens, because just in the middle of doing nothing in particular, it declares that we win, and that's that. So we've completed the campaign. I think, realistically, we won this a long time ago. That's how it tends to be with strategy games, because you get to a point when you're going to win, and then you just have to do the busy work. That's the annoying part. Interestingly, if you keep playing, it deletes all of your diplomacy. So we're now at war with red and light blue, meaning it's sort of one half of the galaxy versus the other, a bit more <laughs> balanced here. We could probably win, but I don't care, and nothing would happen if we did in this context. Not that anything actually happened when we won, other than the text saying that you win appears on the screen. That's all the reward I need. There's no <laughs> unlocks or anything like that, no campaign to move through. I tried to get my diplomacy back by the looks of things, but it didn't work. Here was the post-game scores, always nice to have this in a game, and they sort of indicate that we were winning early on, essentially. We and our light blue allies were dominating for most of the game. There are so many different categories of stuff you can look at here, I'm not even bothering to scroll through them, but there's a lot of data it gathers. Overall, the picture was, it was fine. The only possible contender, I think, from the stats was the dark blue faction, who were kind of rising to prominence with us, but then took a downturn when we just immediately invaded them upon encountering their borders by accident. 
so I think being super aggressive paid off as it often does. A relatively short game, only 5 hours long as it says there, it can even be less time than that in real life if you discover how to increase the game speed, which I did not during that campaign but we'll discuss that in a bit. You can see from the user actions stat that in the early game the trend is a bit shallower as I was probably reading tooltips or something stupid like that. At some point it became a steady upward rise as I was playing at a very consistent rate. I feel like most of the actions I took were probably just building things because doing military attacks doesn't take many mouse clicks at all which is quite nice since your ship just automatically hunt things that are near them. So that was that, the campaign was over relatively short. But I was interested in coming over here to a button I'd seen earlier, Map Designer. I was immediately severely disappointed by the Map Designer because the maps are so simple. I really expected a full Map Designer visually where you'd be on a map and you'd be clicking to put planets down and drawing in the lines, that sort of thing. It's more like an algorithm tweaker. So it's a way of generating a random map with certain rules, with a very difficult and not user-friendly UI to do so and, well, I tried essentially to make a system with a lot of planets in it, that's what I wanted to do at first, but what I didn't gather is that the stars, planet groups and planet group contents trio of lists there are supposed to be kind of nested concepts within each other, so you select from left to right and then change different parameters. So what I thought I was doing here at the bottom is increasing the planet count. I ended up increasing the pirate count and generating this map, which was actually pretty cool I thought. It's a map where all the players have barely anything around the ring on the edge, and then there's this massive super fortified middle that blocks many of the players from reaching each other, and just takes up most of the space and has most of the stuff. I thought a potentially interesting game could come of this setup, and with that in mind I started going through and tweaking this idea because I wanted to do something with this. In particular, because by the end of the last campaign I'd worked out how the, how the pirate thing was functioning, I thought, well if there are billions of pirates, maybe we can use this to our advantage. I tried to name my new map Space It's Like World War II because I'm so hilarious and smarmy. The game punishes me by deleting my map, it seems there's some sort of fun feature here where if you give your map the wrong name, it just straight up deletes it and you have to remake it from scratch. Well that's good, I think the real reason here will be because I'm putting a colon in the name and that's some sort of forbidden thing, it's like an SQL code injection or something in how the game works, so it doesn't let you do it and just deletes the map to avoid glitches. Well that's useful, it lets me call it hey, let me call it what I want, so that is my new map, it's going to be a map with a few planets per player and millions of pirate bases as per my earlier sort of accidental experiment. And you can tell it's going to be a good map because looking at the preview causes the game to crash. We are in for a treat. There's still an element of random generation so it won't be exactly like what I saw but it will be a similar mess. And I decided to play with the game settings this time. We can change the behaviour of the AI, set them to be specific factions. And we can change the difficulty, you can see 2 up from normal, we have unfair, but it goes 2 up from that as well, up to vicious, so I decided to just set it all on max difficulty. My thinking was that the AI would need as much help as they can get once they're attacked by, I think it was 150 pirate bases I ended up putting in there in the end, something like that anyway, so I figured the AI was in trouble, well we'll see. For now I sit in my corner and start going for some sort of economy focus build, we're going to need as much money as we can get. The issue is that on the map creation thing, I accidentally set the phase lane length to the wrong value. I seem to remember you had a choice between red, yellow and green for phase lane length, I think that's very clear what that means. Well it turns out it doesn't really change the distance between planets, which is what I initially thought. It changes the time it takes to go down one of these hyper lanes, and we've got it at the maximum time. So it takes absolutely forever to jump between systems now. That's a game ruining change, but I just played on anyway because I wasn't paying close enough attention and, well, for no good reason really, I just wanted to see if I could somehow get my plan to work and maybe it wouldn't matter. So the first pirate wave comes in and we've paid someone or paid the bounty on someone to get them to be the one who's attacked and I was thinking yes, this is it. Now hundreds of pirates will go in and destroy their faction, leaving them weak and the hope 
was that I would find out who was close to me, and I'd do that to them, then I would steal their stuff. That's the game plan. As it happens, the yellow faction I selected actually is next to me. I made a couple of useful discoveries because I wanted to delete one of my starting shipyards to make more logistics space to make temples, the things that give you research instead. And I discovered that this little thing at the bottom is a button and the plus and minus sign down here changed the game speed so we've worked out how to blow things up and speed up time, two useful powers to have in any situation. We can use that sped up time to slightly counteract the fact that it takes so long to go anywhere now. And with the shipyard gone, we put in that trade hub, not a temple by the looks of things. I need to get some more money, although we will be blowing stuff up for religious purposes as well. Here's an interesting discovery, I don't know if it means anything. I noticed that this one planet has an eye flashing over it. I'm guessing that has a meaning of some kind, and I thought maybe I'm supposed to do something with this. Or maybe it's another faction doing something to this planet. I don't know, but that's good. If you know what that is, why don't you write it in the comments where it will be far too late to help. All I was doing is waiting for the next pirate cycle to come along so that I could destroy somebody else. But then things started to go wrong because me and the yellow faction got into a bidding war effectively. Whoever's on top of the list when the pirates set out is who they'll attack, so we need to make sure it's somebody else. But that somebody else is making sure that it's me at the same time. And with the AI on max difficulty, two steps above unfair, they're probably cheating quite a lot and can likely afford to set the bounty on me to just be anything. As it happens, as long as they're the one who happens to be still making their bid as the pirate raid triggers, it doesn't matter, we can still force it to be them, as long as we have the money to keep the bidding war going of course. As it happened we did have the money this time, but we'll need to focus on our economy to make sure that is always the case, and that is what I was doing. In particular, not expanding our pop cap very much, so we keep as much money as possible. Here's the next 15 minute cycle, and by now I was wondering, wait a minute, why are they still alive? Shouldn't they have been completely destroyed by 100 pirate bases worth of stuff going after them? Well, this is the first clue that this whole strategy is not going to work like I thought it was going to, not even nearly. And it is costing us quite a lot of money, too, to try and outbid a cheating AI. Plus, looks like my fleet was wiped out while I was doing that because another faction showed up. And of course, their fleets are going to be much bigger than mine at any point during the game. I'm sure the cheats will help them with that. So the choke point planet that we need to get to, to get anywhere else in the galaxy, is denied to us here. Well, it's sort of denied to us. I was able to cheekily colonize the planet. However, Red sent one or two purge ships, so they're just nuking it all the time. And it took too long for us to get any ships back here to challenge them, due to the phase lane length being the wrong colour. And I didn't have time to build any ships here by the looks of things, so we ended up losing the planet, all of our stuff blows up, and we have to abandon the area. And by then it was too late because the other factions were starting to come down and take things over, so Yellow took it shortly after this. That means we are trapped in the corner at the end of our very long phase lane. Nice for defense, we can sit behind a choke point and turtle up, but we can't really do anything in the game like this. However, I still had a plan, I still miraculously had not quit the game. I wanted to do some diplomacy strats. I discovered this screen that actually lets you see your relations with all the other players. I wished I'd had this in the first game. I was thinking it would be good if this was in the game. Turns out it's just behind one of the buttons that I hadn't clicked, another classic off ED move. Well, it's not particularly useful, but it's just nice to see. We need to use the inferior diplomacy screen to make friends with people. Looks like there's now only a bounty on me, and I can't afford to outbid it on anyone else. So now, the pirates are coming for me. Well, we're going to find out the hard way, how difficult it actually is to fight the pirates we set up. My plan in the meantime was to use my vast economy to my advantage. As it says here, we actually have the biggest economy in the game, despite probably the AI cheating a lot. I thought this means there's a lot of hope for me, because even if they've maxed out their fleet capacity, they're only losing like 90% of their stuff, and I thought that means they're not cheating that much economically. We'll see later that's probably not the case, but for now, I theoretically am rich and can use my riches to sling other players to make them like me and to make them win on my behalf because allied victory is turned on, so there is hope here from this situation, we just have to have somebody win for us. In the meantime, here are those pirates and we can see the pirate fleet is tiny. 
This is both because, when you have millions of bases, only one of them sends ships at you during the pirate attack, so it doesn't stack up like I thought it would, and because the pirates are on a low level of alertness or something. There's a kind of pirate escalation bar somewhere that goes up the more valuable targets there are in the galaxy, and they're on a low escalation on that bar, so they don't send many ships when they need to attack. Now, you can see I've discovered my main mechanism from now on. There's a certain research you do that then allows you to give stuff to other players, so we use our vast resource income to make other players like us, but there's a limit to how much relationship you can gain by giving people resources, and that's going to be one of two big diplomatic restrictions that will make it hard for us to actually do this strategy. We can also start building herald ships to send them out and make other factions like us, but you have to be at peace already with the faction for that to work at all, and just getting peace with the faction is quite hard because nobody likes each other very much. We do get peace though with yellow, and that's a big deal because they're on a choke point in front of our choke point. So when the pirates keep coming at us, they first have to go through yellow's massive cheat AI defenses, and they're getting pounded by all sorts of things on the way. That's going to help us out, and my own defenses at my choke point should then be enough. We have plenty of time to prepare, of course, since it will take them so long to get to us. I ended up sending all of my ships to Yellow's choke point, because I figured the more fighting that happens here, the more we might be gaining some sort of relationship bonus, because we're fighting pirates in their system, they'll consider that to be helping them in some way, and they'll like us more. That's the plan, but in the end, it doesn't matter how much they like us, because of the second big diplomatic issue that we just can't get over, and that I think is really screwing any sort of diplomacy in this game. It turns out that you can't advance through the diplomacy tree and do the various pacts if you don't like them, which is a bit confusing because I thought I was me. It's the future, maybe it's not that easy. They really like us, but my faction doesn't like them. And while I have options to make them like us, I can't make me like them. And I need to do that to be allowed to even negotiate any of the pacts, which we need to get into that allied victory situation, and just make yellow more powerful so they're more likely to win and will benefit more from being slung by me in the corner. In the end then, we actually can't make much progress at all because our relations with yellow will just keep going down. If they never actively court us, we can't get closer to them. We've got a sort of reverse unrequited love situation where I made them love me, but I realized I don't love them, and so we just can't be together a shame, and that's going to effectively ruin this game, which was already ruined in like six other ways beforehand. This would have been a great time to quit the game and stop trying, but for reasons I just don't even know, I kept playing, despite it being really laggy, really slow, and there being no hope of achieving anything. For whatever reason, I thought this was going somewhere. So here I am doing my next strategy. I'm deleting temples of a certain kind so I can build the temples of another kind. You basically have military and civic research, but because you're so tightly capped on how many things you can build, we can unlock most of the military tree by having loads of military temples, and then once we've researched everything, we delete them and make the civic ones instead, and you keep your old researches. So in this way, we can go through the whole tech tree without having enough logistic space in our empire to do that normally. A handy cheat. I actually found something that could be useful to me. Because you can give missions to other factions, I can dare Yellow to send me an envoy. The issue is, it doesn't tell you if the AI is actually going to do it when you give them a mission. There's just this half an hour timer, and they might do it at some point in the next half hour, so I have to wait half an hour to see if this plan's going to go anywhere. That's a shame. Luckily, having the game speed turned up does reduce that weight. Well, in the meantime, we see if daring our unrequited, unrequited love partner to come to dinner with us will get us anywhere, and we watch as they go out with their new boyfriend, Orange, unfortunately. Yes, Yellow and Orange are teaming up against Red by the looks of things, which is good for me, I suppose. Anything that sees Yellow happy, that's all I really want. Well, I eventually found out there's another technique we can use to potentially change the situation. When you load the game, it shows the game setup screen again here. And I realized that if you actually click on the buttons, you can change the game settings a little bit. And in particular, 
you can actually change who the player is. So that's a pretty big feature you can use here. You can just be one of the other factions, and I suppose that's a way to get out of any losing scenario. Just be the faction that's winning, and therefore you'll win. We finally found some good strategies here in Sins of a Solar Empire. Well, here we are playing as Yellow. As you can see, the resources thing I hinted at earlier. They have infinite resources, basically. So while I technically have the biggest economy in the game's logic, I suspect it's because the economy stats don't factor in cheats. So yes, they had infinite stuff. Now what I could do is force them to build tons of envoy ships using all of their remaining pop cap and send them to me. The issue with this is that because of the phase lane thing, it takes them absolutely forever to show up. So again, a plan that can't be done quickly. What I can do though is bribe off ED. So here's the way to get myself to like somebody, change bodies into that somebody and make them bribe the original you and therefore a new relationship will blossom. This is a good technique. However, once again, we hit the limitation that you can't do this very much. So we can't make off ED like yellow enough to get the first level of pact and start going down that path. We can offer ship vision and then I can switch back to off ED and accept ship vision. So in this way, we can now see what Yellow's doing at the very least. The restraining order has been lifted, but we're still not quite as close as I would like. And that, after all the drama, is where I finally gave up on this game of Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion, because I realized it wasn't going anywhere. And the only way to actually do something with this well, it's to just switch to a faction that's doing better and play as them, which is the solution to any strategy game, I suppose. So that's the end of that, really. I had one last idea, which is kind of pointless after the failure of the previous ideas, but I thought I could play as Red, Yellow's enemy, and delete all of their stuff so that Yellow sweeps through, and maybe that would be good for me in some way. Unfortunately, the delete button doesn't delete everything you have selected. I tried just selecting everything to blow up their fleet all at once, but it actually only blows up one of the ships and after a while as well. So I think what I needed to do there is click delete loads of times. The possible issue is that clicking delete on something that's already being deleted undoes the delete and stops it from happening. I don't know if there's an easy way to blow up all of red stuff. I tried to find it and I failed, which is pretty much the entire summary of this part of the campaign or this second campaign overall. What I was able to do was surrender as red. So I'm now still playing as red, but they're just sort of not playing, I guess the AI switches off. When you're surrendered, you can see the whole map. And we can see the off ED fleet is wasting its time fighting one of the bajillion pirate bases out there. Probably not going to achieve much. And you can see, I think adding all these pirate bases is probably something to do with all of the lag that I'm getting as well, which only further slows down affairs. So this brought my time in Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion to an end. I thought I might be able to do something funky with the custom map setup. Unfortunately, as I went through, I was sort of disappointed at every stage Everything I thought I wanted to do didn't work in the end, for various reasons. Sometimes I'm blaming myself, sometimes I'm just blaming the UI, like that whole phase lane length thing. And sometimes I think, well, it's just an old game, it doesn't have that many features, and it's very sort of standard feeling. I don't know where this is in the, the gaming history, how many games took influence from this, and that's why it feels so standard. Or maybe it is just... A very safe, kind of basic RTS game where you capture the dots, go along lines, and you have like three units to use, and you just throw them at the enemy and see what happens. Well, it was somewhat enjoyable at the very least. I sort of liked the first half of my first campaign, which is often the case. I thought it should have ended sooner, and after it ended, I sort of was disappointed to eventually realize I'd sort of seen it all already. There wasn't much more you could do. Probably playing multiplayer was supposed to be the crutch that adds more strategy and depth to the game, but that's just not for me, so I'm just going to have to leave this game be by the looks of things. My quest to play every space game carries on, and I'm pretty sure I've got like five more installed right now, so there are plenty of options. But I thought in the meantime I would go and play something else. Although the next game I played after this actually turned out to be a massive failure. And I might just make a video about how much of a failure my attempt to play this certain game actually was. It will be a short one, but perhaps of interest with some game design commentary as well along the way. So rip to Offy D in 0G. 
The man who everybody loved, but he just couldn't find it in his heart to love them, and everything was ruined in the end. Ah, the sagas of space. I'll see you in another video.